fine students. I'm just making sure all of my plants are taken good care of. Hello, Mr. Ritz. Bobby Bear, hello. It's so great to hear from you. What's new? The family is on the move again. We're looking for a new- Hi, Mr. Ritz. I want to see. Ha ha, I see you have your hands full. Hi, Cubs, where are you headed? I want to see. The salmon didn't come up our stream this year, but I know a few other streams we can go check out. So we're going exploring. Yummy salmon. That sounds like so much fun. I love exploring the great outdoors. Well, I won't stop you guys. Go get those salmon. Thanks, Mr. Ritz. I'll let you know how it goes. Yes, I want to hear all about your journey. Call back soon. What does this button do? Wow, brown bears live in a really interesting environment. Would you like to learn more about brown bears? My uncle, Dr. Ritz, the zoologist, works at the American Museum of Natural History. Let's go pay him a visit. I'll grab my other hat. Let's go! Wow, we made it! Dr. Ritz told me to meet him at the Alaska Brown Bear. Maybe this way. Wow, I never knew there were so many things in the museum. I wonder, how are we going to find the brown bear? What about a map? This museum is so big that the museum provides a map to every visitor to find what they came to see. Let's take a look. This is a map of the first floor. Do you think we'd find a brown bear here in the Hall of Human Origins? No. What about here in the Hall of Ocean Life? No. Do you see a bear on the map? Yes, there's the bear in the Hall of the North American Mammals on the first floor. I bet that's where we can find the brown bear. We're on the second floor. Let's find our way downstairs. This way, please. Over here, Mr. Ritz. Ah, there, Dr. Ritz, finally I've found you. I've worked up a sweat walking all over this museum. I bet that guy is warm underneath all that hair. Ha <laughs> ha, absolutely. A brown bear's fur keeps it nice and warm when it's cold. Brown bears live in places where it gets pretty cold outside in the winter, like the Pacific Northwest, Canada, Alaska, and even parts of China, Russia, and Europe. Did you know that all mammals have hair, Mr. Ritz? Some more than others. Another feature of mammals is that they are warm-blooded. Warm-blooded? Is that why I'm so hot right now? Very funny, Mr. Ritz. Warm-blooded animals have the ability to create warmth from within their own bodies. They don't have to rely on their environment for warmth. So that's why bears can live in cold climates? Exactly. Mammals can live in lots of different environments. They can live above ground, below ground, in the water, in the freezing cold, in the desert. And one mammal can even fly. Fly? Which mammal is that? Why, bats, of course. Oh, right, they're so cute and cuddly, too. Mammals are excellent cuddlers, and that's one thing that makes mammals very special. Mammal mommies give birth to their babies, feed their babies milk, and they care for their young. Just like my mom and dad took care of me. Who are the people who take care of you? Moms and dads, aunts and uncles, Grandparents and siblings, teachers and friends, it sounds like we all have communities that help take care of all of us. And we're all born cute, with big eyes, big ears, big noses. Aren't they adorable? Just look at all those cute baby mammals. 
Did you know that a mouse will stay with its babies for 10 days and a kangaroo will carry her baby around for a whole year? And elephants care for their children for a whole decade. That's 10 years. Hey, Dr. Ritz, it looks like the bear is hungry. Do you see what the bear is eating? Fish, that's right. Brown bears grow really big because of their nourishing salmon diet. I observe, that fish already has a bite out of it. Who took that bite? Let's investigate. Do you observe another mammal in this environment that might have taken a bite out of the fish? Something smaller than a bear, perhaps? There it is, a river otter. I bet that small mammal took that little bite. You're right, Mr. Ritz. Brown bears and river otters eat the salmon, and what they leave behind provides lots of nutrients for plants and insects, enriching the whole ecosystem. Just like living in a community. Our community grows stronger when we work together to make our lives better. Well, if you're interested in learning about mammals working together, I've got something else to show you. Who are these busy little critters? Castor canadensis, bless you. No, no, Castor canadensis. That's the scientific name for North American beaver. Oh, I see. What are these beavers doing? Are they all working together? Oh, yes, working together in large family groups called colonies. Beavers can drastically alter landscapes. They use logs, branches and twigs to build dams across streams. The water builds up behind the dam and creates a pond. Beaver-made ponds? That's incredible! They're like tiny construction workers. Do you observe how the beavers get the wood for their dam? That's right, their teeth. They must have very sharp teeth. Oh yes, beaver teeth like all rodents, never stop growing. So they have to keep gnawing wood or their teeth would get too long. Wow, does that mean all mammals have teeth? It sure does. Most mammals have teeth, except for a few. I wonder, what is a mammal that doesn't have teeth? Anteaters. Anteaters have a long snout and an even longer tongue for lapping up all the ants. Hey, Dr. Ritz, what's a snout? A snout is a mouth and a nose that extends out from the face. Oh, like on a dog. Exactly, or like those moose over there. Oh, now I understand what a snout is. Those moose do have very long faces. Hey, Dr. Ritz, what are those two moose doing? It looks like they're fighting. They are. Those two male moose are challenging each other to see who gets to take the female on a date. The female will typically choose the winner. A date? How exciting! I wonder what a perfect first date for a moose is. It definitely involves eating lots of plants together and maybe a swim. Well, let's leave them to it then. Have fun on your date. Over here are American bison. Millions of bison once roamed the Great Plains across the United States, eating the grass and nourishing the soil. Hey, I noticed there's a bird on the bison's back. Yes, of course. Those are brown-headed cowbirds. They love to follow the bison around and eat insects that the bison kick up in the grass. The birds also eat insects off of their backs. That's so cool. So they both help each other out? Yes, that's right. Thank you so much for introducing me to the North American mammals and for teaching us so much, Dr. Ritz. Oh, you're welcome. Which mammal was your favorite? I love how the beavers work together. We all need helpers and we can all help each other out. That's part of being in a community. Who helps you in your community? And who do you help? Speaking of help, Dr. Ritz, maybe it would be nice to have someone help clean that up.
Oh, don't worry about that. There's a whole other community of insects and fungus that will clean that up. Wait a minute, you're telling me there's a whole community living on poo? I guess that's pretty cool, huh? And gross, but mostly cool. Speaking of cool, thanks again for teaching us so much, Dr. Ritz. I'm glad you had so much fun. I think it's time for me to get back to my school community, but I can't wait to come back to the museum and learn more. Bye now. See you soon. Did you know that you can visit mammals at the museum too? You can go in person, or you can even go online. Visit the American Museum of Natural History online at www.amnh.org forward slash explore. Take a virtual tour with Google Street View. Test your knowledge of the natural world on Kahoot or explore Ology, the museum science website for kids. Welcome back to class, students. I had so much fun exploring the American Museum of Natural History with you today. Let's draw our friend, Bobby Bear. For this directed drawing, you'll simply need a piece of paper and something to draw with. A pencil, crayon, or a marker. You might like to use a pencil in case you want to erase, but I'm going to use a marker so you can see better. Now, Bobby the Bear has lots of parts, so we're going to start first off with Bobby's head. And we can just make an upside down U to be Bobby's head. Oh, look at that. We've got a bear head. The next thing I'll do is put in two circles for Bobby's eyes. One eye and another eye. Ooh, he's coming alive already. The next thing I'll do is I'll put in some eyebrows so we can see Bobby's eyebrows. Oh, look at those eyebrows. Now I'll start making the snout. It's just a little line here and a little line here. Now we'll make a big circle for his mouth and his nose. Look at that. Oh, yeah. We'll put in two little circles for his nostril. That'll be his red nose. And then we'll make a simple line for his mouth. Look at that. We've got a bear head. Now, I think we should go for the arms and remember what's at the end of those arms. So it's a big brown bear. Hello, Bobby. Look at those claws. Ooh, pretty treacherous. He's got an arm there. And we'll do another one here with those big claws. Now his arm is there, but bears stand on their legs. So we're going to make a big, long line right to the bottom and put out his feet. Look at those feet. And we'll make some hair over here. And then another leg here with some feet and claws. And then we'll make his body go all the way up. Oh my, we've got a bear. Hmm, I wonder, what are we missing? How about those ears? Let's make some big ears, big bear ears. It says two U's. Look at those U's. Those are big brown ears on the bear. And remember, bears have lots of fur everywhere. So we'll add in some black lines. Maybe make a line right here around his head. They have some darker spots in the middle. You can take some crayons, and the first thing we'll do is make the bear brown. So we'll start on the outside with some brown, making a beautiful outline of his body into his hair. We'll be sure to get those claws and his big shoulders. Look at that. Oh, 
face is definitely brown. We'll add some brown on his ears. And then we'll add in a little bit red for the nose. So we can put in some red on the nose, maybe a little bit of red near his mouth, right here. Oh, look at that. We'll add some bear lines. Look at those hairy bear lines. Oh, yeah. See that? Lines help make your drawings become alive. And then what we can do is even add in a few more colors. We'll add in a little gray for underneath. And look at that. We have a beautiful brown bear. Hi, Bobby. Well, I sure had fun drawing with you boys and girls today. Hi, Bobby. Did you find the salmon you were looking for? Oh, yes, we did. We found a lovely stream with lots of salmon in a new community. Where are the cubs? Fast asleep. What did you do today? My friends and I took a trip to the American Museum of Natural History. We learned so much about mammals today. We met Dr. Ritz, the zoologist. Brown bears, beavers, moose, and bison. We learned that all mammals live in all types of environments. We learned that all mammals are warm-blooded and have hair. We learned that mammals take care of their babies and that mammal babies are very, very cute. We learned how animals work together to make their lives better. That's so important for a healthy, thriving community. That's amazing. I better get some rest while I can. Bye, Mr. Ritz. Bye-bye, Bobby. See you soon. I can't wait to explore with you again, my friends. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh -huh.